Super bikes, leader bikes, 1,000cc motorcycles, whatever you want to call them, they are a manufacturer's opportunity to flex on everyone else. They throw everything in the kitchen sink at these motorcycles. They've got tons of technology, screaming high red lines, lots of horsepower, and they require a very dedicated and judicious throttle hand. Otherwise, you will find yourself in the slammer. But these motorcycles have been like this for a long time. Leader bikes have always been the cream of the crop, the best of the best. And and back in the day, they didn't have all this electronics. They still made a ton of power. They were a lot of fun to ride. And it kind of begs the questions, did these bikes peak in the mid 2000s? Let's find out today. guys, both of these motorcycles are wrapped in plastic, they're fast as hell, and they're really uncomfortable to ride, which basically makes them boilerplate superbikes, right? So this is a 2021 Honda Fireblade. You guys know the deal. This is our expert bike giveaway. It's fast, it's loud, it's flashy. We've taken it on the racetrack, and it is absolutely ridiculous. But this over here is a 2008 Ducati 1098. It is absolutely pristine, it's beautiful, and it's our modern classic giveaway. Now you might, you know, forgive us for including this because it doesn't exactly make sense in the modern classic giveaway, but we hope you can forgive us. Now, we've ridden both of these motorcycles and spoiler alert, we do like the Ducati a little bit more. And is that because we're a bunch of Euro simps? Maybe, but we'd love to tell you the story of both of these bikes and maybe you'll understand why we appreciate this a little bit more. So the year is 2008 and you want yourself a super bike. You're busy watching Casey Stoner rip around on the GP8 and motorcycle technology from racing is starting to trickle down to four stroke engines thanks to GP's switch to four stroke in 2002. It's not quite there yet, but what motorcycle is best to pick up than the one that is currently the reigning champion in World Superbike, the Ducati 1098. Let's not talk about how in 2009, Yamaha completely cleaned house with the R1. That's kind of besides the point. The motto of the era here was best summed up by the boys over at Dona Media, Mo Power, baby. I mean, this bike was basically the biggest and baddest thing you could get in that year, aside from the 1098R, which did make a little bit more power. So with the full might of the Ducati Corsa boys back in Bologna, what did they equip this motorcycle with? Well, it came with a 1099cc L-twin engine, making 160 horsepower and 90 foot-pounds of torque. That was good enough to get you down the quarter mile in 10 seconds flat and would see you to 170 miles per hour if you were brave enough to keep the throttle open for that long. It comes in at 420 pounds wet and ready to ride, which even by modern standards is pretty good for a leader bike. Now, let's talk about some of the tech and features on this bike that it came equipped with, and um, there are none. This bike doesn't have an auto blip, no quick shifter, no slipper clutch, no ABS, and a cable actuated throttle. In fact, on the left hand cluster, you might see a mode button that might make you think that you can tile back the throttle a little bit, but all that's gonna do is change between trip A and trip B on your TI-83 calculator on the Ducati over here. This is basically as raw of an experience as you can get on a leader bike. At the risk of sounding like a Ducatista, this bike features a lot of character, and even for the time it came out, it was pretty different. Starting with this steel trellis frame, this is a classic Ducati touch, and you really don't see these on Japanese motorcycles with their aluminum twin spar frames. It also has a dry clutch, which makes it sound like a bunch of marbles in a tin can, but it is an awesome sound, if a bit of an acquired taste. Check out these rear undertail exhausts over here too. You don't see these on modern bikes because they are a verified testicle cooker, even though they do look pretty cool. This motorcycle also has a long and flat kind of feel about it too, which is different than modern bikes. And overall, it just has a lot of that character and feel that we miss in old school leader bikes. Now let's take a look at the Honda Fireblade and see what super bikes are like 13 years later. Now the leader bikes of today are completely different from those old school leader bikes. Not necessarily in terms of power numbers, we will talk about that in a second, but in terms of the technology and racing prowess built into these motorcycles. This is the accumulation of decades worth of experience crammed into a motorcycle that was supposed to dethrone all of the other bikes in World Superbike. Unfortunately, they're not cleaning house the way they wanted to, but they still made a really cool motorcycle here. 
It's got 100 less cubes out of the engine, but it's still pushing 55 more horsepower than that Ducati right there. This has 215 horsepower at the crank in its Euro trim. And yeah, it's only 207 at the wheel, but guys, it's still over 200 horsepower. This motorcycle right here is beyond fast. And while it's heavier than the Ducati at 443 pounds, it will get you up to warp speed in the blink of an eye. In fact, on its own, this motorcycle is so fast that it's completely unrideable. The rear tire will spin in all gears, basically up to like fourth, fifth, and sixth. And then you have to deal with the brakes that are so sharp that you can tuck the front end if you're not careful. Last but not least, this bike's 186 mile an hour electronically limited top speed actually necessitates additional downforce to keep it stable. Mercifully though, Honda has equipped this motorcycle with a NORAD supercomputer that monitors everything on this motorcycle. It takes a look at your low down torque control, wheel, slip, slide, and lift. You've got ABS, traction control, rider modes, and more all baked into this bike. To make things crazier, the suspension is electronically adjustable, which gives you the most angelic front end feel that humans and robots combined could possibly give the world. So with all of its farkles and features and top end horsepower, does that actually make for a better motorcycle? Well, it depends on what you consider better, right? So we came up with this graph here at Yami Noob HQ where we've tracked performance over time also plotted against a fun factor. Now, this curve over here shows that the performance of a motorcycle over time does get better, but as time increases, the actual gains start to get smaller and smaller. You see this with racing where it costs exponentially more money and time to get a few tenths over a current lap time. We also think that over time, motorcycles, if you keep chasing that extreme racing performance, the fun factor does go down exponentially as well. Nobody wants to ride a MotoGP bike around on the street, I guarantee it, because it would blow up. So we like to think of the Ducati 1098 and mid-2000s motorcycles as being in this kind of Goldilocks zone and that they're still very fun and the performance is really high as well. The Fireblade, it has a lot more performance, but it's also not nearly as fun to ride around town. When you consider a variable like fun factor, the ergonomics of a motorcycle tend to be very important, and these two bikes actually sit pretty different. Let's go take a look. Starting off with the Fireblade, this is 2021's possibly most aggressive motorcycle you can buy on the showroom floor. This is literally a World Superbike bike with lights, right, Spud? It's pretty ridiculous. Yeah, it's wild. Yeah, so check the ergos for me. How do you feel on it? Mounting up on it, you know, the reach of the bars is like, okay, it feels kind of normal. And then you get your feet up on the pegs and you're like, oh, this is not comfortable. Yeah, um, it's it's so uncomfortable that even when I took it out on track, I was like, I need this lowered because my literal leg is cramping. Um, it's way too high. Yeah, this, this bend in my knees is the most aggressive I've ever felt on a motorcycle. And it really makes you feel crumpled and pushed forward the whole time. Yeah, and it's the type of bike where it's commanding you to get that 62 degrees of lean like Marquez, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'll swing a leg over here. 511, 32 inch inseam. And uh, yeah, even for me as like a dedicated like track dude, um, this is ridiculous. Uh, this, this, this is really aggressive, needlessly so, honestly. Um, and it just goes to show you again that when you go after that crazy top end performance, you start sacrificing a lot of stuff. You all of a sudden need to be a certain size to ride this motorcycle. Right? It almost feels like you are even pushing the limits. Yeah, of I feel like I'm almost too big for it, which I barely never feel on any motorcycle. So this is pretty crazy. Um, now let's get the Ducati in and see how that feels. Kicking it back to 2008, what was the ergonomics like on this motorcycle? Spite, wanna swing a leg and tell us? Yeah, so the first thing that I noticed when I first got on this motorcycle is how much longer it was. Yeah. It feels a lot longer. You're less perched over that front tire. And when you get your feet up on the pegs, it's actually reasonably comfortable with a lot of room to move around on this seat. Yeah, there's a lot of fore and aft movement on the seat for sure. It's a it's a much bigger motorcycle. And as a bigger guy, 6'4", 240, and with a 34-inch inseam, this motorcycle's super comfortable. It feels really good for me to sit on. 
It's kind of weird that, you know, it's an Italian bike. You'd think they'd make it for small Italian men, but they didn't really. And it's lighter weight than the Fireblade too. Yeah, well, so, mercifully, it doesn't have all the crazy computers and stuff in there. Yeah, so I love the ergonomics package on this bike. It's way easier to get along with on the day-to-day. -day. Uh, again, it will roast your butt and your testicles and your grundle very quickly. <laughs> but uh, overall, like I like the way this sits. The foot pegs are way lower. This is just a much nicer place to sit. And as Spite mentioned, there's so much room like guys look at this like look how far back i can get on this seat there's like two hands that you could put right there um, lots of room to move around makes it a really comfortable bike to ride around but i think we need to get a third party opinion on this motorcycle and see how whitney gets along with it <laughs> oh. Feeling that, that big yellow Italian oh. slab of beef underneath you. Oh, goodbye. Goodbye, Spite. <laughs> See you later. Jesus. Uh. So, Whitney, you have mounted oh. up on the Ducati for the first time. How are you feeling on that bike? You know, you can, you hop on a bike like this and you just know. There's just something about your brain and your wrist connection and something magical happens and you go, oh, hello. Hi, <laughs> Ducati. It's, um, you know, it's beefy, it's heavy, but I'm, I'm already loving it. I mean, How do you feel about the fit? Because I'm looking at you right now and you actually look a little bit small on that bike. I do feel, uh, it makes me feel a little bit more insignificant when I'm riding this. Um, but I, I kind of like that, I guess, in some weird way where I feel like uh, I'm jumping on a mythical creature that's going to take me to another dimension. <laughs> if, I feel like if any, app, or any motorcycles deserve that, uh, you know, centaur-esque you know uh gu guide you through narnia feel it's probably the ducati yeah um, there's a there's definitely a sense of like artillery based mysticism how do you how do you feel about the just mechanical raw nature of it because it's it's got it really does feel to me like a machine you know it doesn't feel like a vehicle so much Oh yeah, no, I love that. It's super charismatic. It's really enticing. You know, the magic carpet feeling has a place and a time for that, but you know, if this was my grocery getter, I'd be way more excited to go get groceries. <laughs> I cannot wrap my head around how you do nothing to the throttle and you look down and you've jumped 20 miles per hour. Oh, yeah, it is. I can't comprehend that. Like, you got a little bit of a straight here. You should lay into it a bit. Oh, my God, I can't even keep up. Hey, you're barely touching. I didn't do anything. <laughs> Spite, I didn't do anything, and it does 60. I was like, oh, okay, wait. You're already at the end of the straight as you're thinking, like, okay, I got to, I, I can do this. I can uh, lay into it here, and then it's over. Yeah, it is, it is one of the most uh, effortlessly powerful leader bikes that I've ridden. And, and you know, I starting, I've spent more time on it since uh, we filmed, because we're word to the wise out there, some folks out there. We've actually filmed this on a different day than we have filmed the rest of the video. Uh, but I've spent a little bit more time on the bike since we started it, and my opinion on the motorcycle is that it's not this brutish, angry thing anymore. It's just actually kind of a playful way to make 160 horsepower. This is... We're gonna hang it right here so that you can get on the highway and play with the power a little bit, because we gotta, we gotta get you out on the highway goofing around with all of it. Oh, man, beefy beefcake. All right, 
Where? You gotta feel just super cool though, right? Um, oh yeah. Like honestly, it feels like the sort of bike that movie stars ride. All right, Spike, should I do it here or should I wait? You should definitely lay into it a little bit here. Guys! I didn't I'm even do, <laughs> I just nothing. I had to go through three gears at like full throttle to keep up with you. It's crazy how effortlessly fast that bike is. Now, let me ask you, since you're playing with the power, does it scare you at all? Does it feel like uh, it's this unruly animal? No, I mean, I'm definitely more of a timid rider, especially on uh, bikes that aren't mine. But mm -hmm. I feel like if I've got to hang out with this bike for a little while alone, oh, no, it's not <laughs> intimidating. It would be, it would be a lot of fun. I, I can hear when you get on the throttle in, in the cardo. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I can I just immediately have to snap on full throttle to try and keep up. I will say there is a grundle panini happening right now. Um and I feel like my calves are on fire. That is distracting a little bit. But the, the heat on the bike, yeah, it, it is a it is a very toasty place to sit. And it handles, I don't know, this is fun. Like, it just wants to lean, it wants to go, it wants to go a lot faster than I'm willing to let it. But I'm not even doing anything. It doesn't, 65, <laughs> 65 feels like 40 on this. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to flip around here and let you bang off a couple of gears. Uh... We, we've got a we've got a spot where we can turn around coming up so let's uh let's start getting left and we'll, we'll cut over guys to the uh to the whitney goes super fast now you all righty whitney you ready all right, I'm ready. Hold on. Woo! It's getting hot. <laughs> All righty, on the other side of this bridge, if you uh if you want to Give her the beans. I suggest you drop whatever, one gear and then just lay into it and shift through a couple of gears because the gearing is short on that bike. So, whenever you're ready. understand what's happening so I'm like okay get into it I'm like 90 okay what's happening <laughs> it's so much fun though the torque down low is just this is a bike I could ride all day and totally fry my gonads and I, I wouldn't care it would be worth it yeah honestly guys that is my kind of leader bike right there yeah I'm... this is so much fun see you later <laughs> And you literally don't have to worry about no. being in the power band anywhere, right? No, that's this this shits on the R6. I'm sorry, it really does. <laughs> it just takes a fat dump on it because it's just got so much punch. <laughs> and that is a bike from 13 years ago, guys. Well, with all of that being said, we could sit here and wax poetic about this bike all day. <laughs> Why don't, don't people want to see us for an hour just splooge all over this bike? 
<laughs> You're like, okay, guys, we get it. You you had fun today. <laughs> All right, folks, we're back here in the shop. I sent you guys on a little rendezvous mission with the uh, 1098 over there. And Whitney, it was your first time riding a bike like that, mid 2000s sport bike. Just what did you feel? It's a total. It's a whole experience. It yeah. feels like artillery, or, or um, feels like artillery. Artillery. It's <laughs> a hard word. It feels like artillery. <laughs> That's a tough one. It's okay. I quit. Keep it. <laughs> I, quit. Today, I just quit. This is the end. Okay. Um, <clears throat> it feels like a tank. Yeah. You know, you've got like the sound. You've got the feeling. Um, it was so funny. Jake kept telling me to do a poll, and I'm like, okay, and I'm like, car. I'm like, okay. He's like, do another pull, drop a gear. I'm like, car. I'm like, it's, it does, it's 80 miles an hour or zero. Yeah. Like I kept, I've never experienced that. Because mm -hmm. usually you've got to like, with the R6, it's like, oh. Yeah, you got to wind it out. No, no it has speed right everywhere. There. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And even as I was riding, and it was like hard to wrap your head around the torque. Yeah. You're just like, what's happening? Did you notice that it's like it doesn't really want to go slow? It no. kind of wants to keep amping up the pace, you know? I noticed mm -hmm. like um, at slower speeds, just at a stoplight or whatever, you're just like, okay, this this just wants yeah. to go. Yeah, it yeah. feels like a race bike mm -hmm. when you're doing that. But I had I haven't ridden in two weeks, and I'm like <laughs> sweating, and it's 110 <laughs> degrees, and I'm like tiptoeing. I'm like. Yam said, don't drop it. Yam said, don't do anything wrong with it. I'm like nauseous. I feel like it oh always feels like a first date or something. Yeah. You're getting to know something that's unique and has a lot of personality and it's intimidating. You're like, is oh, my, yeah. it's my tie is straight. How does my hair look? You know, I, I would say, I would say out of like all bikes, that is the most like, if you wanted to take the dating analogy, it's like, it's kind of like a supermodel, right? Yeah. Like you said, you're nauseous, you're feeling queasy. Everything's extreme and intense. You're like, I shouldn't be here, right? Like yeah, I don't deserve I told, to be I here, Jake, I'm right? Like, I'm so nervous. I, what am I going to say? <laughs> <laughs> How am I going to impress this bike? And then it was just so funny because the moment you start hitting it, you're just there. Yeah. You're just there. And I'm like, oh my God, this, this is insane. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, it has that vintage vibe. Like, yeah. It's got that girth and it's heavy and it's- It's uh, raw it's and angry. And... It sounds like it's falling apart and I've never <laughs> ridden a dry clutch before. Yeah. So yeah, it was like going to another planet almost. Yeah. So you've experienced R6s and some sport bikes in the past. Um, would you say that this was a different experience? Uh, 100%. Um, okay, cool. Yeah, where I felt like, it felt like the year 2021 when I was on the ZH2. Uh huh. This feels like, okay, oh, ooh, you like you're tapping into yes. um, a vein of history or something really crazy. Yes. Mm -hmm. You're, you are going back in time. Yeah. And modern classic guys, modern classic. <laughs> it is weird that it's not that long ago, but it does feel mm -hmm. really, it does have age. Yeah. It's because from that bike until this point, they've done so many things to chase that kind of top end performance and the crazy race bike stuff that these things can do nowadays. Um, so bringing us back to the thesis of the video, bringing you into this too, you've been quiet, just <laughs> mulling it over, right? Um, we're trying to answer the question, did these kinds of motorcycles kind of peak in the mid 2000s? Was this a Goldilocks zone for these bikes or is it better now that they are like this? So I guess, Spite, we'll start with you. What, what do you think? I mean, my... Because you rode this a little bit today too. I, I rode this around and I've also had experience on the 919. I owned that for a year, uh, 2007, one year uh, earlier than this. And then I have the DRZ, which is practically ancient. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of motorcycles from around that time. And they were so much more fun yeah. than the bikes of nowadays. Because yeah, they didn't make as much power but they're every bit is real world fast. Yeah. They have this, the, the smell of these old bikes. You get it with the Busa too. Uh, just this smell of being around it. It's got an old plasticky, oily smell to it. Uh, they're, they're mechanical and clunky and mm -hmm. you can tell that they were put together by human hands. Yeah, it's, it's cause like the, the sum total of an experience of riding a bike isn't just its performance, mm -hmm. you know? And I gotta ask you this, did you feel like the Ducati was slow? Oh my God, what? <laughs> what? Because everyone no. on the internet's gonna tell you, well this one, well, Whitney, no. this one makes 55 more horsepower, so that's gotta be slow, I've never, right? I like, barely touched the throttle and there's the back of a car. 
I did. Did you actually get to ring it out at all, or was no, it even? It was man, like you didn't even get to feel because the top end is where it just no. comes alive. It's crazy. It's I like it pulls like an animal. Coming off of that fever dream, eighty-five, just right there. I'm like, oh well, that's that's good. I feel that was a great <laughs> date. I paid for the bill. I had dessert. Oh, it's fine. I'm going a second one. Yeah. So. We'll ask you the same questions. Um, you know, do you feel like that style of bike, some of those feelings you get out of them from those mid two thousands bikes? Um, you know, do you think that they're better than the newer bikes? Do you uh, like them more? The world needs to crumble because then we can go okay. back <laughs> to emissionless. Like, just give. Oh yeah, the just, fueling, right? Oh, like, just give yeah. motorcycles. Just they can, but everything else can. Yeah. Um, try to make the world to stop. You know, from dying. Right. But we need these. Uh, mm -hmm. But we need these. <laughs> and that's what I want to happen. I want society to fall. Uh -huh. And so the infrastructure for emissions regulations for motorcycles is just not there anymore. Yeah. <laughs> just start over. Whitney's <laughs> going to be riding on the apocalyptic planes on a straight pipe DRZ, guys. Don't worry. It's <laughs> going to be awesome. Imagine this bike, but with new tech. Yeah, like well, that's that kind of like the a lot of people consider like a, a an 1199, a 1299 Ducati, the big twins that had a little bit of a sprinkling of electronics on them to be better than these. But I don't know, for my I money, do, I do like this one man, too. Man, that one's so good, you know. Like you it's don't so even plastic. have a gear position indicator. No, no like, you don't have nothing. anything. It's so it's There's no so, ABS. <laughs> no. Knowing that it's just you and the throttle makes the riding more intimate. Yeah. And more like you're in control of everything mm -hmm. on this motorcycle. Yeah, each gear I was like, ooh, hi, hey. You know, yeah. it was just it was so You get to grab every single gear up mm -hmm. and down, you know? It was so personal and it was so like it was an experience each time you change a gear. Yeah. When you're on the boil, you grab that next gear. And there's so much torque that the tire lifts and it yeah. does the thing. That's and my sets favorite it down. thing. Yeah, because you just feel how animalistic it is. Because you're wide open, you grab the next gear, and it's just like, God! <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, I guess it's supposed to do that. And you see the steering stabilizer just working. You're like, oh, okay. Um, so, yeah, guys, we have a bit of a soft spot for these motorcycles. If you have only ever ridden newer bikes, oh my God, I would highly encourage you to take a look back in the catalog. Even like 15 years ago, there are so many good bikes that you may have not thought of that are just kind of languishing on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace or maybe at your used dealerships. Um, and there's so many gems too. Like we got this mm -hmm. right off a of dealership floor. It is a pristine, perfect example of a mid-2000s motorcycle. And we just think they're freaking sweet. Um, we appreciate these bikes because they're amazing at what they do, but neither one of us here have um, MotoGP or World Superbike levels of talent to no. even use this thing to anything of what it could do. And it's no fun on the street as it's a result. It's no fun. The gears are so long. You actually get to mow through the gears on mm -hmm. that thing. Did you notice that the gears are a little shorter? Yeah, I love that. Yeah, it's you just so that torque it. You're like, holy crap, you know? This thing, you just got to be like on the boil, and then you look down, and you're like, well, I got a thousand cops behind me, and I'm going yeah. to jail. Bye. 94 miles an hour in first gear. Like, what? That's, that's just useless. Yeah. So... Final thoughts, what do you guys think? Mid-2000 super bikes. It's the Ducati for today, right? Like we all like the Ducati more. What? Mm -hmm. Once again, you're like, oh, duh, that's the one, right? Yeah. No, and then you're like, oh, what's that? Mm -hmm. You get giddy with that one. So we're gonna try to, over the course of the next couple of months of the Ducati, convince you guys that um, these bikes are actually better and more interesting to ride than some of the newer stuff. But if you disagree with us, let us know down in the comments below. We appreciate your time watching this video. And uh, we'll catch you in the next one. See you later. Remember, both giveaway bikes. Don't forget that. Click the links. Click the links. Bye-bye. Tell them. Bye-bye. 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 <laughs> Leave a nice comment. It's how I get paid. <laughs> Keep watching Yamino.